Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. And Patch 1025 is launching real soon, set to release roughly in 10 days from today, on January the 16th for the NA region, or a day after for the region of EU. Like most 0.5 updates, this patch is one of the smaller in-game additions that doesn't bring with it a new raid or a new seasonal content, but it does add more quality of life improvements, new open world activities, plenty of new collectibles to obtain, expands on the enjoyable system of dragon riding, and even brings with it a handful of new features. If you are somebody who wants to get the most out of the content arriving with the launch of 1025, maybe to explore some of the class specs using the newly added follower dungeon system, or explore Azeroth in a more dynamic fashion, or to simply maximize your ability to obtain new collectibles, then this video is going to go over some of the recommended things that you can start working on this week to help your characters get prepared better for the launch of the patch 1025. But right before that, most of you guys watching these kind of update videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you remind, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you're watching these videos anyway. Especially if you want to get more regular content regarding Dragonflight 10.2 or any of the future updates going forward. One of the more exciting features coming out to the patch 1025 is Dragon Riding, which is now going to be available in the rest of the zones of Azeroth, not contained just within the Dragon Isles. And so far there's been nothing nearly as fun as just being able to soar all around the old world zones, with them trying to dive under bridges and in between rock crevices or along a waterfall, or just having the ability to climb up to the tip of a mountain within seconds, dragon riding in general has got to be one of the best features they've added of any expansion. However, unlike some of those key features of expansions like the artifact weapons of Legion or the Azerite power necklaces of BFA, we don't abandon these features. Instead, all of these things are now evergreen and they get to stick around for a while. This means you could take a dragon and ride around all of the previously explored areas in the brand new way. However, dragon running outside of the Isles is going to be capped to be 85% as effective as the normal speeds for dragon running in the Isles, which has been somewhat of a point of contention within the community. The reasoning behind this change is them trying to balance out the exciting nature and the engaging model of the dragon riding system versus preserving the sense of immersion when it comes to creating a massive open world. So with dragon riding arriving to the rest of the world, now is the perfect time to start working on your dragon riding skills or rather your dragon riding glyphs. Most players that I know don't actually fill out the dragon riding abilities. In fact, most players prefer to pick up the skills that they use most often while foregoing some of the more passive, underrated options. Though all of these skills, both passive and active, all together help enhance the dragon riding system and allow you to fly faster and further than ever before. And if you're looking forward to getting some of the other cosmetics that you can earn through some of the dragon riding cups that are arriving to all of the old worlds of Azeroth, such as Outland, Northrend, Pandaria, and the like, getting access to all of the dragon riding skills will help you familiarize with all of the different maneuverability options to make completing some of these races a little bit easier. And since dragons will finally become rideable outside of the Dragon Isles, you might as well get some of the newer customizations so you can show off your mount in places like Orgrimmar or Stormwind. And if so far you've been playing Dragonflight without leveling an Evoker, there's an extra reason to start playing one as Evoker's solo flying ability will become available as of 10 to 5, which might be one of the best racials in the game as it finally allows you to fly around just like a real dragon should. If you are still a novice or one of the newer players to World of Warcraft, then you may wish to work on leveling some new characters ahead of patch 10 to 5, especially since follower dungeons are arriving with this update. With follower dungeons, you'll be able to run dungeon instances with NPC followers through some of the normal Dragonflight content. These followers will be able to take on roles to help fill out a party without the pressure of having to pug with other players, and will be able to provide you helpful tips as you tackle normal difficulty bosses and fights designed for group gameplay. For newer or less experienced players, follower dungeons are a perfect environment for you to try different classes and even different roles without getting yelled at by the rest of your party, while getting the chance to gear your character through some of the normal entry level content. Which means if you've always wanted to try a tank or a healer playstyle but felt overwhelmed when trying to do group and game content, then follower dungeons should help ease a lot of that anxiety, which gives you the chance to try all the different playstyles you've always wanted to try. 
especially with the Darkman Fair event, which is out next reset, which will grant you 10% additional experience gains, which should make leveling new alts a little bit quicker. Plus the time walking dungeons, which are a great source of fast experience gains. And if you do need any direction on which character you may want to level for the next update, I suggest working on a Mystery River Monk, which is first of all one of my favorite aggressive melee healing play cells in the game, and currently one of the more meta picks for Season 3. While the patch 10.25 doesn't offer too many game-breaking class changes, you can expect all of the popular playstyles such as Protection Paladins, Havoc Demon Hunters, Fire Mages and the like all to stay relatively strong for endgame content. However, out of the healers, Mystery World Monks continue to get stronger and stronger with this update. Defensively, Mystery World Monks are getting a variety of additional bonuses such as the talent of Dance of the Wind which grants you additional dodge chance that will keep on stacking every few seconds until you eventually dodge an attack, which will make this talent far more consistent, resulting in better guaranteed dodges. Getting up in the melee with a Fist Weaver playstyle can sometimes place a Mist Weaver in a more dangerous situation compared to opting out to heal from a distance. But in content such as Dungeons, Fist Weaving is such an incredibly efficient form of healing that there is no really way around it. Therefore, to make it less punishing of a playstyle, Ancient Teaching Talent, which fuels the melee healing playstyle, is going to grant you additional stamina to help compensate. Also, Thunder Focus T will now have an interaction with Expel Harm, causing them to transfer additional damage back to nearby enemy targets while providing the monk with a Chi Cocoon that absorbs damage taken, which will make Mist Weavers even more tankier than they have been so far. With Secret Infusion Talent, empowering Expel Harm with Thunder Focus will also grant you versatility, which will further improve your survivability by a considerable amount, which altogether might make Miss Rivers one of the tankier and one of the more durable healers going forward for the next update in Season 3. However, if you do end up leveling any new characters, you might as well level a Worgen also in preparation for the 10 to 5 questline of Gilnea's Reclamation Story. So far, the rewards and the details behind the story questline have been obscured from us over on the PTR realms. However, like some of the other story quests that we've been able to experience, some of them do end up rewarding certain factions or even certain classes additional rewards, such as the quest for retaken of Lord Ron quest, which granted hunters a dark ranger set, as well as blood elves and night elves dark ranger customization options. And since Gilneas is the capital of the Worgen, or rather the Gilnean people, there might be some sort of a special reward from completing the questline as a Worgen, however for now that's just a speculation. Though at bare minimum all you'll need is a max level character in order to experience the questline, however I'll probably end up leveling a Worgen just to see if there's any kind of rewards once 1025 is officially revealed. As part of this update, we gain access to a variety of different customization options, such as a handful of hair color options for the trolls, as well as a new darker skin tone for the Draenei. But we also get new demonic customizations just for the class of Warlock, which is going to add additional Tyrant, as well as a variety of Dark Glare customization options. In a recent blue post, they also mentioned that there will be an achievement for completionists that end up achieving every single customization options for some of their demons. And that's something you can start working on today. If you've yet to fill out your demonic customization collections, you can start working on some of the basic demonic summons, such as the Imp, the Voidwalker, the Syed, the Fell Hunter, as well as some of the more special summons, such as the Infernal. Part of the 1025 update is going to add additional quest lines in order to help wrap up the expansion with some of the Dragonflight epilogue quests. And sometimes story quest lines do contain prerequisites to be able to complete some of these new quest lines. So it's very much recommended to at least finish out the Emerald Dream 10.2 quest line in order to not deny yourself the chance at some of the epilogue storylines. Though for some, story quest lines are not their biggest draw and they would prefer end game content such as dungeons, raids, or even PvP. However, finishing out the story questline is at least a great source of flight stones for any fresh and old characters, and awards a heroic crest once you finish the Midrasal story quest. And at best, you only need to finish it out on one character, since a lot of the story and most prologue progression is generally account-wide. 
And for now, that's gonna be the full list of some of the things you can start working on ahead of the patch 1025. I wanna thank all of you so much for watching the video and hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. As per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single video and live stream, we have a link to our Discord community channel. Probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.